Hey, episode 80 of the Nashville Artist Podcast is now out, featuring Sam Bernhardt. Sam is a multi-instrumentalist, producer, and proud owner of two adorable cats, Dr. Pizza and Muffin. Join us as we learn about Sam's musical journey. He talks about the profound connection between his creativity and mental health, sharing that he often finds solace in writing music during difficult times, drawing inspiration from his friendships, romances, and deep appreciation for nature. Sam's solo project, Oblique Angle, takes listeners on a journey through mellow and psychedelic sounds, characterized by unconventional song structures. He shares how his musical path took an unexpected turn in the face of a saturated guitar scene in Nashville. Embracing his innate desire to support and empower fellow artists, Sam discovered his true calling in playing bass, infusing his performances with a profound sense of camaraderie and belief in others. Influences like the Beatles, the Shins, Aphex Twin, and Here We Go Magic. Movie favorites like Children of Men, 2001 A Space Odyssey, Anchorman, Step Brothers, and Eight and a Half. Enjoy the podcast episode. I mean, it's my day off, so woke up and had a thing of coffee and hung out with my cats. Nice. How many cats do you have? I've got two. What are their names? Dr. Pizza and <laughs> Muffin. I love Dr. Pizza. <laughs> Man. I'll have to have you over. He's a big sweetheart. I love cats, dude. Man, I can nurture the shit out of a cat. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm more of a cat person for sure. I like how they do their own thing and then come back and hang out and then to go do their own thing. Like, I like how independent they are. That's why I like them more than dogs. Me too. Like, <laughs> and they're not huge, so they're not going to, like, knock shit over and run well, off. Well, they might still. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. But, but usually intentionally. That's true. It is intentionally. <laughs> like, you didn't pet me today, so I'm going to knock this lamp over yeah, cats are funny in that way. They have little attitudes, and they remember shit. And, and I had this adorable cat named Melvin, and he was like my best friend for a really long time when I lived back in Chattanooga. And uh, he was like a little black Egyptian-looking cat with green eyes. Cool. And he was the sweetest little thing ever. Like, I'd be watching a movie or playing a game, and... He'd come and rest his little chin on my arm and just look up at me. <laughs> and I, it was just so irresistible. I oh, just, yeah. I couldn't stop. That's I, adorable. I was, Please. <laughs> you're <laughs> too cute. <laughs> yeah. I was, like, I was like, oh, my God, you're so cute. I love you so much, but I can't get anything done. <laughs> and, like, yeah, he would just, he knew how to, like, be here. And, like, he would, I'd make Melvin headbutt me, and then he would run over to me. And then mash his little head into my head, and and he like I don't know he could understand me he could like I don't know it was just I, I haven't had a relationship with an animal like that in a while, and that was like really special. Fortunately, he died a couple of years ago, or he ran away because he was gonna die, so he ran off to be alone, Aww. so he could die by himself. Cause apparently, that's what cats do sometimes. Because he was like thirteen or fourteen. They live a long time, and yeah. um. Man, he would curl up in a little little bun, and I would, like, go over and touch him, and he would be like, <laughs> The activation noise. Yeah, and his little chin, he would look so cute, because his little chin hairs were flattened, because he'd been resting on his chin. And so, yeah, Aww. man, uh, I, I miss him. And I could pet the shit out of him. I could stick my face in his belly, 
and he wouldn't claw me or hurt me. Oh. Um, well, yeah, I'll have to have you over and you can hang out with my cats. They're pretty sweet. Oh, yeah. What part of town do you live in? Uh, the south side. Okay. Have you been there for a while? Mm-hmm. Yep. Since 2016. Wow. Man, I remember, I think you lived there at Wald Hirsch. Wald. I don't live there anymore, but. you. I remember playing a show there. Yep. I remember that. In the basement? Yep. <laughs> That's kind of a scary basement. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it did look like a torture chamber. But um, anyways, we'll get started. Cool. Hey, everyone. Welcome to The National Artist. I'm Jordan, and today Sam Bernhardt is here. Hello. Thank you for coming over and doing this. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So where are you from? Um, I grew up in North Carolina, mainly, um, from 1999 until 2010. And we lived in a town called Hickory, which was kind of in the foothills uh, near the mountains, which was a really lovely place to grow up, honestly. You could go... Be in the mountains in an hour. It's always great. Was it, you said North Carolina? Was that, uh, where, was that northern North Carolina or? Uh, kind of, of the western. Close, like an hour from Asheville, an hour oh. from Charlotte. Oh, yeah. Then you're in Mountain City or. Yeah, pretty mountain much. country. Yeah, pretty much. Do you have any siblings? I do. I've got a sister. She lives in Atlanta. Is she also into art and music? She is. She okay. is. Yeah. What is her name? Uh, Mary. Mary. What What does she do? Or um, she does basically like data analytics type stuff. Um, I don't know the full. What um kind of art and stuff does she like for music? She likes a lot of stuff. Um, she kind of got me into the shins. Oh, yeah. Which is funny. The shins. Like, I had heard them a bit, but she was really into them. She's younger than me. And, uh, you know, she kept being like, you got to check out this. And it's great, you know. And I remember when New Sling was all the rage. Oh, yeah. Because of uh, Garden State. Do you remember that movie? <laughs> I do. That movie got me into the shins. I think that was like 2003. That checks out. Um, that's cool. Um, what about your parents? Do they do art or music or are they into art and music? They're both fans. Um, my dad plays some guitar and my mom is a recreational painter and a craftsy person herself. Um, they're both ministers. Oh, nice. And they live in Erie, Pennsylvania currently. Wow. Which well, is all right. I kind of miss North Carolina. I do. I don't get to go there that often or as often as I'd like. What um, Erie, Pens what, what denomination church are they? They're currently Presbyterian. My mom. Uh, Protestant. Has, mm -hmm. My mom has done a lot of different stuff, but my dad has always been Presbyterian. Nice. That's actually what I grew up being Presbyterian. Um, so, what were you into as a little kid? As a kid, um, being outside, I played soccer. I've always loved music. Um, thankfully, my parents have good taste, and pretty early on, I don't know if you remember when that Beatles 1 album came out? I think so. My dad bought that. The 90s? Mm-hmm. Yeah. My dad bought that album, and he played it a lot. And I remember having my mind blown as a little kid, just because I had never heard anything like that. And I didn't. I had never really heard any older music either, I guess. Yeah. You know, I'd heard NSYNC and Backstreet Boys. And, that was pretty current at that time. Yeah, yeah. And it was mind-blowing to hear stuff like that, and... That definitely got me into guitar and drums and bass even. And I wanted to play drums really bad when I was a kid. And my parents, I think, were smart enough to know 
<laughs> this is going to be so loud. We're not going to. that, yeah. We're not going to let that happen. But I tried for years to convince them. Yeah. That's amazing. My, I remember when that album came out because my oldest brother it was his birthday. My mom went and got it for him for his birthday. Nice. Like the CD pack. I remember it was pretty big. Yeah. It's all their number one hits. Makes sense why it's called one. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I got into that and yeah, that just kickstarted the journey. I mean, all the classic rock bands basically you can think of came after that. And, you know, that's my parents' generation when, music. When you were uh, in soccer playing or a little kid, did you, other than soccer, what like activities did you do? Did you like, play with action figures or anything like that? I liked uh, toy cars. I liked Legos. I definitely played with Legos a lot. It's always fun to build something and make a creation. And my sister and I would make little games together and stuff. We had a creek behind our house. Oh, amazing. It was honestly probably kind of a gross runoff oh. creek. Oh, uh, really? But nice enough. Right. And we didn't care. We were little kids. And thankfully, our parents, too, have always been big nature advocates. So we could go get dirty and just shower off afterwards and stuff. But we would go play in the creek all the time. Uh, our family loved to go on mountain trips. So we would even just take a day trip to go up to the Linville Gorge area. Oh, yeah. Or sometimes Asheville. That wasn't really our main place to go but we'd go up into the blue ridge as much as possible pretty much and it was right there i mean an yeah. hour drive yeah it's so easy <laughs> <laughs> that's beautiful it truly was i'm very very fortunate to have grown up there yeah you really got to embody the nature aspect of life growing like being around mountains and playing in a creek like, I'm, I feel similar because I grew up on Lookout Mountain. Oh, and, wow. And on I, the mountain? Yeah. Wow. And whenever it's cold, I love it because I'm like, I can smell the chimneys. I can smell nature and it's so quiet. I can hear really far. Yeah. It's, it's so beautiful it's, up there. Yeah. I'm sure you've taken that. Well, I don't remember what the trail is called, but there's like the Ridge Trail. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, Sunset, you can go to Sunset Park, get on it. You can go down to Craven's House, which is the or, uh, the medical house from uh, the Civil War. Oh, yeah. And it's like a starting place where you can start hiking. And then there's Covenant College trails. But yeah, that was it was an amazing like growing up in the in the woods kind of thing <laughs> i bet man that's super cool um so w what first got you into like playing an instrument or music like when you were younger um yeah weirdly enough i decided i wanted to play clarinet in elementary school i was in fifth grade i believe and I started taking clarinet lessons at the college. There's a college in Hickory called Lenore Rhine. And I was taking clarinet lessons there for probably a year or two. And then in middle school, I joined the school band, of course. And yeah, I already kind of knew some clarinet. So that was great. And I still play clarinet. Wow. I have never stopped. So that was my first real instrument, I guess. Wow. Um, and then in addition to that, I was begging my parents to get me a drum set or to take drum lessons, and they were saying no. But they did relent eventually and compromised and let me borrow a kid's guitar from our church, an electric guitar, nice. <laughs> so that I could see if I was actually going to stick with playing guitar before they bought me one. And I guess that was probably sixth or seventh grade, middle school. I started playing guitar. And 
Yeah. That, what were your, like, during middle school when you were starting on guitar, what uh, music or guitarists were like, wow, they're really cool. I want to learn stuff like that. Um, I remember playing a lot of Green Day, <laughs> oh, <laughs> which yeah. is funny. But it's, uh, you know, it was very popular at the time and commonplace. And also, it's power chords. So learning power chords. Yeah, I wasn't that bad. As a kid, you know, you're like, yeah, I'm good at guitar. <laughs> I can play power chords loud. I don't know. Very like quick gratification. Right. When you're starting out. I bet you played along to some Green Day in your time. Yeah, I um. Well, and adjacent to that, I was really in Blink One Eight Two, and. Uh, Blink-22 is the reason I started playing drums. Travis Barker was the reason I started playing drums when I was younger or in seventh grade. Um, I got in, or in eighth grade, I got into drums. And I liked Blink-22 so much that I, and I liked Travis Barker so much that I wouldn't even attempt to try and play any Blink-22 songs. I went and learned Led Zeppelin songs instead because I was like, Travis is already... To me, at the time, I was like, he's number one in my book, so I don't even want to, like, step in his terrain. <laughs> it was weird, yeah, but I was like... I mean, that guy is crazy good at drums. And the way... He's like, so fast. And how much, like, how lively he is when he plays them. Yeah. Like, he doesn't save any energy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. like, but, yeah, that was... I was more I was more in Blink One Eight Two I think Green Day although I did get Dookie whatever CD in like seventh or eighth grade yeah that's a good one yeah my my oldest brother was really into Green Day and so he was like here listen to this yeah I also remember learning a bunch of after I got a little better at guitar I was learning a bunch of like Jack White and Rack on tours stuff. That's always fun to play along with, and it's really good sounding, but it's not too complicated. Yeah. So it's a good entry way too. All right. So Green Day, Jack White, and Rack on tours, and you know, learn some Beatles songs too. Beatles is always a little more difficult than you think it's going to be, which is funny. All their guitar work is really like, I don't know. It's not what an American probably would play, <laughs> if that makes any sense, even though they were trying to copy like the American blues guys, I think. Yeah. They always had some weird, I don't know, there's always like weird 7th or 11th chords going on there that as you're an amateur, you're like, this doesn't make any sense. <laughs> But that's, you know, it adds to the sound that they have. Definitely. So I'd try to play Beatles songs and probably not do a great job because they're always complicated. Nice. So uh, what other, like, music was your parents listening to that influenced your guitar? Or were there, uh, what were your favorite bands other than at the time on Green Day and mm, at the time. Gotta go back. Um yeah, depending on the era. I mean I guess in high school I started getting into what people would call indie rock, I guess. Oh yeah. There were so many bands right. doing that back then. And honestly some of it has aged really poorly in my opinion, but <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Some of it's good still, like the Shins, as we talked about. That's still what I would consider pretty good. What is one that you think didn't age as well? Mm, I don't know. I was into this band called The Bravery when I was younger. Oh, never heard of it. It's fine. It's very 2000s sounding. You really? know, 2008 kind of sound. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, it was all right. I mean... <laughs> I don't know. My taste is always changing, so it's kind of hard even to remember all the different stuff I was into back then. 
Nice. Why would you say uh, you're drawn to music and art? Um, at this point, if I don't play music regularly, I'm not well. Like my mental health needs it, and I'm not even sure I can explain why that is. But there's just something. It feels so good to make music, especially with other people, and to like push forward together and create something. And even it, whether you're recording or whether you're playing live, you're trying to create a moment that other people can enjoy and live in and for yourself also. Yeah. And that's why I like doing it, I guess. I mean, I love all arts too, visual art, film. I'm attracted to all of it. Maybe nice. just because of beauty. I don't know. Yeah. Not all art is objectively beautiful, but. That's awesome. Um, how do you, like now, how do you practice? Do you have routines or how do you develop your artistic skills? Um, I play guitar a lot for fun and write songs. I don't know how structured that is, really. I don't think I... I'll just pick up a guitar and start playing. I don't usually have a regimented... I need to practice my scales, or I need to practice my chords or something. That doesn't happen very often for me anymore. Um, if I'm playing bass, especially if it's for someone else's music, which it often is, I'll play along to the songs a bunch of times and listen to the songs a bunch of times just to really feel out what they're going for. It always changes once you play with different people. It's interesting to get like a demo of something and try to feel out, okay, what am I going to do with this? And then you meet the people you're actually playing with and it's a different, doesn't sound like the demo because it's different people huh. playing it. Um, but it's good. I like that. Yeah. Trying to fit in. I think that's why I enjoy playing bass so much is you're trying to support the whole band and fit in. Yeah. You kind of hold the foundation. That's part of it. Yeah. You and the drummer gotta be there <laughs> or people are going to notice. Um, and by gotta be there, I mean, there's times, too, where you don't have to play, if that's what's right. But parts where you're supposed to be there, you should definitely be there. <laughs> yeah. When did you start playing bass? I think pretty seriously when I moved here in 2010. I realized really quickly, because I went to Belmont, that there are so many great guitar players out there, and especially in Nashville. So that was kind of an awakening for me when I moved here. So I was like, shit, I'm not very good at guitar, actually. <laughs> and I thought I was pretty good before moving here. Oh, yeah. And then I was like, oh, whoa, no, I'm not. <laughs> it happens to us all. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely. You move to Nashville and you realize I am not good at music. Yeah. And then you strive to get better at it. Right. Um, so I realized guitar... It would be a lot of work for me to get up to where I needed to be. Whereas bass already felt pretty good and natural to me. And a few friends would just be like, yo, Sam, you should play bass on our like jam session or whatever. And it always sounded pretty decent. And that's what people would tell me. So awesome. I just felt like, okay, maybe I could be good at playing bass. And it went from there. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen you play bass in many different bands. I enjoy it. It's yeah. a great instrument. And I mean, you're a drummer. You get it. Playing with a good drummer, a good drum and bass combo, it's priceless. Right. There's like feelings you get. Yeah, it can go in many different ways. You can make people dance. You can make people go, what the hell is going on? Or you can like drive a train. Yeah, I like the 
I've been jamming with my, my buddy Phelps, plays guitar, but every now and then he'll jump on bass. And he, I got used to him playing guitar when he plays bass, I like it too. Cause, you know, it's fun to uh, lead or follow both instruments or even lead both instruments, but yeah. Yeah, I think um, first real band I guess I was in in Nashville was Ada. Yeah, which dude. you're familiar with. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was good friends with Carrick, the front man, and then Stephen Roberts too. Uh, played guitar in that band and did some background vocals. And then we had two different drummers. Uh, my friend Colin from college was our first drummer fantastic drummer and then another guy kyle who was carrick's friend who i believe still lives here in town and tours with a bunch of people another killer drummer so nice man yeah and and you're also a producer like you mixed our EP way back in the day. Yeah, I remember that. That's a cool EP. Yeah. We recorded it at Belmont, I believe. We did. <laughs> studio A or whatever, I forgot. Yeah, the REM studio. Yeah, yeah, the big one. That one's my least favorite that Belmont has. Really? Honestly, but it's the one I could book that time. Yeah, and that was awesome. That was a really big learning experience for me. What is your favorite Belmont studio? Um, I guess I like, I'm fortunate enough to have been able to record in RCAB when that was still a functional space. They had an old API console in there. That's really, really amazing. It recorded a bunch of live albums like Frampton Comes Alive. Wow. And supposedly some Zappa stuff, some Zappa live albums. Dang. Yeah. It was a really cool console, and to be 19 and 20 years old and allowed to just record on that, like, we recorded this out of single there, and, like, our friend was filming it, too, so, so that's still out there in the ether somewhere. Is that on YouTube? <laughs> I think it is, yeah. Um, so that was my favorite room, for sure. It's I don't think you can even record there as it is right now it's like a tour destination huh. there's maybe a way to record there but i don't know if the console is hooked up dang but we got to we did electric ladylands oh jimmy hendrix in new york no no, no 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 you were there at rca studio b a y'all were like this like i can't remember what piece of equipment it was but it was apparently jimmy hendrix's he used on electric like regular. <laughs> I don't remember, but that's cool. I, re I just remember someone saying, like, yeah, that was Jimi Hendrix. And then I was like, oh, really? And I touched it. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta touch it. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Hendrix might have touched this man. Yeah, it was in Belmont at some studio. I don't, might have been that one or another one, but we mixed or something in it. Cool. But yeah, I, and having a piece of equipment used by someone else, it's like it's always, you're like, wow, it still holds the essence of them that I might be able to tap into. Yeah, I always like used instruments, actually. I pretty much only buy used stuff because it usually has a feeling. Some, somebody else has played it. Right. Ideally. Sweet. So, of all time, who are your favorite artists, musicians? Of and... all time? Hmm. <laughs> I really like Aphex Twin. Yeah. Almost no matter what my mood is, there's something of his that I can get down to. Because oh. there's a pretty wide variety of sounds. Definitely stimulating and it's stimulating, but relaxing or like focus. Um, I really like 
a band called Here We Go Magic, and their front man, Luke Temple. I think he's really good. Nice. I don't know, I feel a little on the spot of yeah. all time. Most people are like, let me look at my Spotify or whatever. <laughs> yeah. I, I've thought about it. Because I'm like, I don't know if I can answer this right now. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that is kind of a difficult question. There's so many. My taste is very diverse, too, so there's so many people. Recently, I've really been into Wise Blood. She's fantastic. Wise Blood? Wise Blood. Wise Blood. W-E-Y-E-S. It's weird spelling. Huh. Uh, she's really good if you like Carol King kind of sound. Oh, yeah, dude. It's kind of a modern... It, to my ear, it's kind of like a modern Carol King sound. Did you know he played for Carol King at one point? Really? Yeah, he's on some of her studio. What? Songs. Yeah, <laughs> before Tool. Isn't that wild? I did not know that. Oh. <laughs> that is wild. It's so random. That's pretty random. Um, I mean, of course, I love the Beatles. At this point, maybe this is... This will probably be a controversial opinion, but I've heard them so much now, and the reissues keep happening in the documentaries that I'm kind of annoyed. I'm kind of sick of hearing about the Beatles. Yeah. I like it, of course, but <laughs> it's just so overdone. Um, I love the Rolling Stones, too. Early Pink Floyd is really, really sick. Um, I like 80s stuff. I like it all, man. Nice. <laughs> There's so much. I like classical music. Yeah. I like... Yeah, I like all sorts of stuff. Hard to answer that question. I understand. I understand. So, how did your solo project, Oblique Angle, come about? I guess I was in college, and... I don't know. I felt like I had some songs to put out there. But I I don't know. I've always been uncomfortable with using my own name as like an art project. Oh, yeah. So, oblique angle it was. Nice. So what kind of music, what kind of stuff do you do in that? I guess it's Pretty mellow, kind of psychedelic. I don't know. My song structures aren't usually a typical song structure of like verses and choruses, just because I don't feel like I need to do that. Yeah. Is it? Would you say it's like more progressive or? Not really. It's just the <laughs> just <laughs> how you write it. Yeah. Um. I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't think it's really progressive. But yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have too many like twelve eights going on, <laughs> but it could be fun. Or seven eights, or yeah. fifteen, sixteen, and there's something. You know. Could be fun though. Yeah. Awesome. So, what would you say like inspires your creativity? Nature, friendship, romance. Mainly those. Mental health problems of my own. <laughs> Sometimes it feels like writing a song when you're feeling bad is easier. At least to me. Which is unfortunate, because I don't want to feel bad. <laughs> Especially but, in order to write a song. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not always the case, but sure. I found it's... Pretty common thread. I mean, it's a good way to uh, get it out of yourself. True. Kind of like a journal or diary. Right. So now, all that you do, how would you best describe the type of artist you are? 
Um, I like to be a supporting artist. <laughs> I like to, that's my favorite thing to do, I think, is play with other people and help push their music up if I can. It's so fun to me when you hear someone else's song and it's so good and to help them believe in themselves and push the song up if possible. Yeah. It's a great feeling. The times when you like lock in and you can tell that's what they want. You know, what you're doing is what they want in order for their sound to come out. Yeah. What they hear in their head. It's a great feeling. Yeah. And bring it to life. Nice. So what would you say your strengths and weaknesses are as an artist? Strengths, I think I'm strong with chords at this point. I like chords a lot. I think I'm pretty good at melodies. Weaknesses. Sometimes I have a hard time with criticism, and that's on me. <laughs> Because I know usually people are just trying to help. And I take it too personally sometimes. But I'm working on it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I'm out here. <laughs> uh, I think a weakness, too, is probably my lack of music theory knowledge. I could always know more. But life is busy, and I haven't really delved into it too much. I guess sometimes it can be a strength. A lot of people I play with aren't big like music theory people. So they <laughs> they don't require that of me or they're not looking for that. So but it would be helpful probably to know more. Nice. So you've been in Nashville since 2010? I have. What would you like in you what college initially brought you here? Mm-hmm. Nice. Uh, what would you say is something you've learned living here? That there's always somebody who's way more talented than you. <laughs> and you should try to be playing with people who are better than you at all times. And that's great, being able to find those people and being pushed. Great feeling. I've learned that Nashville is busy and expensive. <laughs> and that it's annoying to me to have to come across the one of the bridges into the east side. They just need like a train or something. Yeah. <laughs> I'm tired of having to drive on the interstate over a bridge <laughs> to get over here. <laughs> If our mayor is listening right now, come on, Freddie, get where's, it together. Where's the transit? <laughs> get it together, Freddie. I don't have time. I don't need a 30-year plan for this. I need, <laughs> yeah. I need it like tomorrow. Right. Get it going. Get it going. Nice. So what is, what is one of your favorite venues to play here or go to? I miss the old cannery. Compound. I haven't been to the new one yet, so I don't know if it's actually cool or not. But I really liked that whole zone. I, I remember they used to do like the eight off eights there. And they'd have both venues going and you would be able to go between the two while they're doing set changes. Wow. So like you go from Mercy Lounge to the High Watt. And that way the music was pretty much always going. That's awesome. I like that a lot. Um, <clears throat> I mean, the Ryman, Ryman is iconic. Any Anytime you see a show there, feels like a special time, pretty much. Nice. There's so many good places around town. Yeah. Exit End's really cool. The End is something. <laughs> Used to play there a lot 
before 2020. Yeah. <laughs> That's a weird place. <laughs> it always cracked me up, the, the person working there. You know, I'd be like, hey, are there any banned beers? And they'd be like, well, we'll see how many people come out to the show tonight. <laughs> Then we'll decide if you get a free beer or not. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> and yeah, and the Flaming Lips have played there. All the different bands that have played there. It is pretty wild. Yeah, yeah. it's such a small, gross little zone. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, everyone has played there. I haven't been in years. Yeah. Have you been recently? Uh, I went like a year ago, and it was pretty sweet. I mean, it was pretty cool. Still the same. Still the same. <laughs> but uh. Yeah, I mean, it's iconic. I played there. I think we, maybe we played there with you all, but I played there before too, and it's a fun little stage. It is. I think Mama would be proud. Has played there a few times. Nice. Do you have uh, like favorite food or restaurants here? There's so many. There's so many good ones. I love um, Taj Indian. Oh, yeah. Southside, that place. One of my favorite places in town. Uh, Deg Thai, also on Nolansville. Super good. I like a Fat Moe's occasionally. I mean, it's always good. They're always the nastiest looking little place, but they're <laughs> so good. Their food is so good. Um, I miss the wild cow. Oh, yeah. R.I.P. That was one of the first uh, restaurants I went to when I moved here. Oh, nice. I just walked there and sat in there. and Yeah. It was nice. I think I got the their nachos or something. I can't remember. Ooh, their nachos are good. Yeah, I miss that place. Yeah. yeah. That was really good. Have you been to Gray's? Mm hmm. I haven't been there. Or no, yeah, I have been there. That's pretty solid. Yeah, I like it. So, what is some advice you'd give someone who was going to move here and do art? Mm hmm. Be prepared to be humbled and work hard and meet new people <laughs> and be open. I think there's a lot of ego in this town. Some of it justified, some of it not. I don't know. I think having an ego about playing is usually not a good thing. Right. Just my opinion, though. Yeah, I keep you stuck. So reflecting back on when you first started as an artist, what is like one of the biggest challenges you've had to overcome? How did you get through it? Um, I guess the pandemic felt like a pretty big challenge because I felt like I was on a trajectory of playing with a bunch of people that just immediately collapsed during that time period. But I kept playing throughout the whole thing, even just by myself or with the few people that were able to meet up and that kept me going and feeling all right. And just persevere, man. Gotta, I mean, like I said earlier, I don't feel well if I'm not able to play music. So <laughs> I have to for my own sanity. Yeah. And thankfully, in the last few years, I've been meeting more people and playing with more people and still playing with a bunch of my old homies as well. Yeah. I mean, I've been playing in Mama for eight to ten years now i guess wow which is pretty wild <laughs> to think about nice what about from last year to this year what would you say is one of your biggest personal growths hmm. in general or playing music in general <laughs> Um, being happy with who I am as a person, not trying to, trying hard to not appease people 
as much as I have in the past and standing up for what I want and what I like. Nice. So how can people support you as an artist? Uh, check out my page. <laughs> no, I mean, that's always helpful. I mean, every artist that I know, if you buy their record, that helps them. So buy anybody's record that you like. That's always a good thing to what, do. What records that you have could they buy? Uh, I've got some on Bandcamp. Just under Sam or under it's Oblique Angles? Oblique Angle. Yeah. Nice. I've got some new music on the horizon, and I want to do a physical release in vinyl this time just to, I don't know. I just want to do it. <laughs> yeah. It'll be expensive, and I probably won't make any money on it, but it just seems like a good endeavor to have a physical. Yeah. I love vinyl, too, so. Yeah. Keepsake. Yeah. Be fun to have some of those out there in the world, like a hundred or so. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So buy your music off at Bandcamp and then follow you on social. Yeah, I think social media is psycho, but sure, follow me on there. <laughs> well, how would you prefer people to help you? I don't know. Just love, love, you know, love is always good. Love each other. Be good to each other. Well, I mean, for you as an artist. <laughs> That's, I don't know. I guess money. I guess buying things, but... They can send you Venmo. <laughs> sure, they can send me Venmo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can send me tips if you... Tips, like, yeah. If you like what I'm doing out here in the world. I don't know. I feel honored already. I would love to be able to transfer to my full-time life being playing music. Yeah. And I think I can do it. Definitely I'm on, can, I'm yeah. on the trajectory to do so. Um, and I'm grateful for all the people I've met along the way and those who hire me. And You know, it's great. Awesome. Hire me for bass if you want. Yeah, that's another way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm available and not too expensive, and I won't mess it up. Awesome. So now, how do you, you said you like movies? How do you consume media? I enjoy going to the Bell Court if I'm going to see a movie. It's always fun. And not that expensive, especially compared to your bigger theaters. I like to buy records if possible. I definitely stream a lot of stuff, but it's kind of unavoidable. What about like, do you like to watch stuff on YouTube? Yeah. Do you, what kind of stuff do you like to watch? I like live performances for sure. There's some, have you ever seen the Beat Club videos? Uh-uh. They're from like a 70s German, I don't even know what, TV station or something, but it's Wait. called Beat Club. Yeah, I've seen the police play there. Yeah, and they've always got a bunch of like random old school artists. It's filmed really well. It sounds really good. So those are fun. And then like KEXP, those are sweet. Nice. What movies do you like? Do you have favorite movies? I like science fiction, drama, thrillers, comedy, if it's good. I feel like there haven't been that many. What are like an example of each one of those that you like? Or... Um... Science fiction, Children of Men is a really crazy movie. There's a lot of good ones out there, though. In 2001, it was really cool. Um, drama. Actually, just last night, I watched a really wild movie called Eight and a Half. It's an Italian movie by Fellini. And it was really interesting and bizarre. <laughs> huh. There's a lot of dream sequences, and the way it's filmed is really nice from the 60s. Wow. I'll check that one out. 
pretty wild. It's mostly in Italian, but there's subtitles. Um, let's see. Thriller? I don't know. I don't know about a thriller. I haven't seen one in a minute. Yeah. But there's some good ones out there. I love to be thrilled. <laughs> right. <laughs> and comedies, I don't know. I feel like there haven't been that many great comedies in the last few years. But I guess favorite top favorite for you. Or a few. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Anchorman is really silly and oh, stupid. Yeah. <laughs> Love that one. Um, Step Brothers is also probably even better than Anchorman. It's just so ridiculous. He's hilarious. <laughs> don't touch my drums. <laughs> He's like, why are you sweating? It's just watching cops. <laughs> Nice. Well, is there anything that you would like to add that I might not have asked you about? I don't think so. Yeah. <laughs> What's your favorite movie you've seen recently, Jordan? That is a really good question. I've been watching shows and watching documentaries. Um, I was watching this. Uh, show called the north water which was pretty intense it's like colin farrell and it takes place in like the late 1800s and they're whaling up in the arctic oh wow i love movies with cold for some reason i love like ice and snow and like i love the revenant oh that, that was movie. intense i mean it was so great i mean cinematography and the soundtrack the brooding sense of something like lingering i love that because i can feel the cold i can just put like it's a very good movie for helping you like be put in the movie you know what i mean yeah you're immersed in it yeah i love that so but lately let's see if i watched a movie lately been a bit since I've seen a movie. Like I said, I've watched a lot of documentaries. Nice. Um, what good documentaries recently? Um, I watched this one on Chernobyl. I watched several on Chernobyl. You know about Chernobyl? Yeah. Crazy. I, find, I watched that show on HBO, and I watched that, and that was like one of the greatest TV shows I've ever seen in my life. It is really well done. So well done, and like I said, you can feel the horror. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and like movies that I can feel make me want to like study them more. So I was like going studying Chernobyl and like bio waste and like nuclear like facilities, um, nuclear power plants, and watching a lot of the documentaries from that because you see the camera like fixed on the building and the building just looks horrifying <laughs> like every picture of the facility is just terrifying it's just and like you can just like from the camera you can like or from the ph photograph you can just tell like there's something that you can't see that's there yeah i'm sure you've seen the picture of like the elephant's foot oh yeah and yeah. how it Hazardous. Degrades the film so quickly. Yeah, dude. Looking at that is just terrifying. I mean, I'm able to just look at that and be horrified by like what it does to the human body. It's just, I don't know. I find that stuff very gripping and very intriguing because it's like, and also in a way, it's like instinctual and protective of like this situation ever happens. I want to know. I'm, what to do <laughs> get it far away yeah exactly <laughs> in that one but yeah i was watching documentary on several documentaries on chernobyl and uh yeah it was just wild that the government covered that up for so long yeah and I, I like geopolitics i like to understand like foreign policy and stuff and like, like i was really into the iraq and Afghan wars, 
watching documentary after documentary just because like we were so young when that happened i didn't really understand what was going on yeah and i was like i want to go back and study it all to understand why so like i studied 9 11 for like pretty extensively then i started studying the wars then i studied desert storm and wild is yeah that is i'm never into any war <laughs> I, don't, yeah. I don't want any war to happen because like when i was in third grade i was afraid that my oldest brother was going to get drafted because of the war and he had just graduated from high school and so i was like shit he's gonna have to go fight in iraq and i was like why didn't like just i don't know it's wild yeah it's so, well Thank you for coming over and doing this. Dude, thank you for having me very much. Awesome. I hope I was able to ask you interesting questions. Yeah, I thought so. Awesome. Well, cool. Kept me guessing a few times, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I dropped the, what are your favorite bands of all time? <laughs> that one has me buffer for a second. Right. Every Everyone time. does. Everyone's <laughs> like, shit, you can't just ask me that. <laughs>